add scientists to work in Poland, but it helps. Today, we're going to talk about the amazing potential of scientists in Poland to conquer the world. Yes, welcome to the studio, John Basin. Yo! Now, unfortunately, he's going to have to explain what his actual job title is because it's a bit kind of sciencey, kind of uh, confusing thing. John, what do you do? Thank you very much, Patrick. Uh, well, <laughs> what I do is I work as the manager for PFR Life Science. PFR Life Science is a so-called special purpose vehicle, uh, SPV, which runs out of the main PFR fund. Shouts out to John for, for actually explaining what the acronym is. Presumably you live in acronym soup. Uh, obviously, I mean, in science <laughs> you live in acronym soup, but also I think in investments you also do this as well, yeah, sure. Uh, so the, the idea is, is that there's biotech sector is growing in Poland. It's a key um, development for the governments. Um, however, there's not a lot of specialist funds, there's not a lot of money in the sector, um, and therefore there's a, a gap sometimes defined as the valley of death, whereby companies go forward, they'll get funding early on, and they'll simply run out of funds. So good ideas won't reach the market because there's not the funds and there's not the specialist funds in order to take them forward. So PFR Life Science looks to fill that gap by investing in viable companies, not just any company, but viable companies with good prospects going forward in order to enable them to go forward and then to reach the market, the market being defined in drug discovery, because it takes a long, long time to do a drug discovery, it's got this long regulatory procedure, would be forming a partnership with a bigger company that would then enable them to go through the drug discovery uh, process. So we're filling this gap and hopefully driving forward more Polish biotech companies as a result. So I can already feel the passion for this particular sector. You're a scientist by... Uh, I am, yeah, that's right. Profession. So um, I did a, a degree in uh, biochemistry and then did a PhD in biochemistry in Cambridge and then I worked in Cambridge University for around 10 years. And so I ended Cambridge. up as a, a senior scientist there. And then coming to Poland, I've now started working in, in investments. And the reason that PFR employed me was to get a science perspective on the project, which I think is required. And so this is what I mean when I say a specialist fund versus a non-specialist fund. A non-specialist fund has many things in their fund. They might have some biotech, but they might have you know, some fintech or some uh, you know, U, uh, UAVs or something like this. Um, but a specialist fund will be particular for biotech. And in order to do that, you really need to understand the science because drug discovery yeah. involves understanding how the drug is going to work, what its prospects are, who the patients are that it's going to be applicable for, et cetera, et cetera. And you need to get into the science to do that. So at PFR License, we have a team. We have me that deals with the science, but then we also have other people in the team who deal with the business side, deal with the finance side. So we feel we've got, you know, as much as we can, the different bases covered. Yeah, and let's explain what PFR is then very quickly, the big oh, picture. That's actually... Polski Fundusz... Uh, 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 Polski Fundusz Rozwoju. Excuse my Polish if it's, if it's not right. Ooh, um, who so said the Brits can't learn Polish? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so anyway, it's the Polish Development Fund. The idea of the Polish Development Fund, I think we can get back into a little bit of uh, economic theory, is that um, is the what's the role of the government in in the um, in terms of developing the economy? Well, it's to fill in the gaps that the private sector isn't doing. This is a kind of Keynesian thought that the role of the government yes. is to do what the uh, private sector does not do. And PFR Life Science is a very good example of that. It's an area where there's no private funds there. Yet there are good companies, there are good ideas, and then how do you bring those forward? And the idea here is that the government can take up the slack, can, can get involved where there's not people currently there, and by doing that can provide an example. This is why we wanted to do uh, PFR Life Science properly. We wanted to run it like a proper specialist fund, maybe not as good at the minute as the ones that you would say see in London or Frankfurt, but something along these lines. And so that will provide an example that you can make money in biotech. If you get the right type of people involved, if you pick the right type of company, if you have the right business development plan for those companies, then you can make money, you can be successful. And then in time, my hope at least, is that there will be no need for there to be a government fund in this particular area, that there'll be so many private funds that there's, that if our life science can, you know, can we can retire and we can be happy. You can retire to that Caribbean beach or... or yeah, exactly, or to, you know, let's keep a Polish example, like re retire to the Polish forest or something like oh, that. Oh, that would be nice, yeah. Uh, okay, so how did a, a British person... Have, have you had this, presumably, where people go, what the hell is a British person Absolutely, at every single uh, meeting I have, people, you know, obviously <laughs> want to know if I can speak Polish and they also want to know what the hell I'm doing in Warsaw and, you know, you know, also people assume that I don't work in Warsaw. 
that when you meet them, they assume that you're based in London and you've just flown in for the meeting and then you'll soon be, you know, getting out of here and because you obviously don't want to stay. But I live in Warsaw. I've worked in Warsaw for a number of years. My wife is Polish. That's why I came to Poland. And when I was working in Cambridge, my boss, he was getting a little bit old. And so they cut down his funding at about, I can't remember exactly, but they cut it down roughly in half. And so as a result, he had to scale back his, his lab. And so a number of us d therefore didn't have our contracts are renewed going forward. So I thought that, you know, to just take a chance. My wife always wanted to come back to Poland. It was maybe a bit of a crazy idea, but I thought this was a good chance to do something different and to come to Poland. And it was very tricky at the start because it's not that easy to find a, a job in Warsaw, particularly the type of job, specialist job in science, um, like I had in Cambridge on similar pay when you can't speak Polish. And, and so... This is, this is like a thing, because I used to go around saying to people, if only I was a specialist, if only I actually had a useful degree, then my life here in Poland would be easier because those kind of roles are, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's just less people that can do them and extend. But you're saying that it's actually oh, not the case. Well, it, it is it is and it isn't. It just takes a time. I think that being a specialist definitely helps moving forward because then people respect you and they don't really mind if you can't speak Polish because you obviously bring something in terms of your specialisation. But, you know, building a network, finding the right type of people to connect to isn't so easy. You can't just rock up in a city and be like, hi, you know, I'm here and expect people to do it. And so it's, it's tricky not being able to speak Polish at the start in order to be able to try and build those networks or get introduced to the right people. So it takes a little bit of time. And also, I think science is a strange example. In, the, um, for other, in other sectors, I'm sure you can get equivalent pay or at least something that's equivalent in terms of your spending potential. But science in Britain is very well funded and science in Poland in universities at least is not that well funded. Yeah. And so you're not, the equivalent, you're not getting the equivalent salary, even allowing for living costs. And so you're getting offered a, a much lower salary and that's difficult to deal with if you're used to a particular thing or you've built yourself up. And in one example, I was getting what was effectively a promotion in terms of what my level was in Cambridge versus the level I would have been offered in, in this case, Warsaw University. And yet, but the pay was significantly lower. So I think that's something that's very difficult to deal with. And it's, it's, it's difficult to move forward from there. So that's why I, I did some other things. And then I eventually ended up working for PFR Life Science. Dream, dream job, my foes, dream job. So do you, can you be, you have to be a mad scientist to be a scientist in Poland, because that's my, my catchy title think, for today's yeah. episode. <laughs> I'm not sure that's true. I think well, that's... Well, it sounds good. I think it sounds good, right? But I think this is obviously um, a, a bit of a stereotype that all scientists are crazy. I think it's... I think they did a, st a scientific study and it was only... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but there's, I mean, look at his socks, it says a lot. <laughs> I, blame, I blame my daughter for the socks. <laughs> she decides what I get dressed to in the morning. Um, but Sorry, sorry. Anyway, so you know, they did a scientific study and it was only 27% of scientists were actually crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the room, That's significantly the room, lower than Yeah, you significantly know. lower than you expect. But I think, of course, you, don't, of course, um, you know, scientists have this reputation of being slightly crazy because the... You know, a scientist that works in a laboratory by themselves are obviously very, very dedicated to what they're doing. And to the wider public, that can be seen as slightly strange. But I think when you're talking about science in, in a business sense, you, do, you don't want to be crazy. You want to be cool and calm and logical. And that's the way, to, I think, to move forward in uh, biotech, is you want a good idea. Maybe that comes from a slightly uh, crazy scientist. But then you want to be cool and calm in terms of how you're trying to develop that. Is that idea a good idea? What's my potential market for that? What type of patients will benefit from that? Is that a patient population that's currently not benefiting from treatments and therefore they'll be applicable to what I'm trying to develop? Who are my competitors? If I do I have few competitors, many competitors? What's my speed to market versus my competitors, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't think there is a lot of craziness in it. I think it's actually, once you understand it, it's pretty similar to other businesses in yeah. terms of what you're trying to do. So boy, were you the right person to join this peer well, Scientist I, I don't know whether that's true. I think you'd have to ask my... Um, who's your boss? I'm not going to... Uh, who's my direct boss? It's, Who, who's uh, the person who's clever enough to recruit John? That's what I want to I would, It was Zosha. Zosha, so, you're a smart cookie, my friend, because John is the right man for the job. Let's talk about uh, what you guys have done over the last year and a bit. Of the okay, team. great. So we haven't done that many investments. We invested in Selvita, who uh, many people will know. They're probably the they're the biggest uh, innovative uh, drug discovery company in Poland. They now employ about 400 people. They're based in Krakow. Um, and they have a number of interesting compounds that they're developing. They signed a partnership agreement with Menorini, who 
for a big Italian pharmaceutical fund. And I think they're often put up as a star of the Polish biotech sector, and I think that will be very fair. So we've invested in them with a long-term outlook. Yes. I think the problem for Selvita moving forward is is that they're considered as this star, and there's going to be you know, bumps along the road. Drug discovery is very, very risky. Selvita have, say, multiple programs that they're doing, and the chances are that one or two of those are likely to run into difficulty. They're going to fail some kind of clinical trials. And so as well as us being smart in terms of trying to invest in the right types of company, we also want to be in it for the long term in order to support businesses' growth. Because a problem that's come up in other countries where you have a young biotech sector is that you get investors going in at the start, they're very, very enthusiastic about it, and then something goes wrong and the investors say, biotech's not for us, just look at these problems. And really you've got to accept that those problems happen and you almost embrace them. It doesn't matter if one of the drugs runs into trouble because you've got another one that's similarly as good and that one's obviously got a chance of, uh, of being successful. So, as, as, so I think that we, by supporting, say, Selvita in a longer term perspective, that we can hopefully provide confidence to other investors if there are problems. Of course, I hope there are no problems and every single one goes forward um, as it should do. The second investment we did is Mabian, which is a biosimilar company, might get into too much science here, but biosimilars, there's two main types of drugs. You have small molecules, which are chemicals, and you have biologics, which are proteins, which you've manipulated in some way to do something, right? I've, I'm way onto science here. <laughs> and um, a biosimilar is a copy of a protein. So this is what Mabian do. There's one of the biggest uh, selling biosimilars in the world is Mabfira, which is made by Roach. And, and Mabian are very good here. They took on a number of... Um, big competitors, companies that you may have heard of, like Pfizer or Amgen, and they've beaten them to market in terms of uh, doing this particular biosimilar. They're currently going through the regulatory procedure with the EMA, which is the European um, Medicals Aid Agency. So there are two investments. We've also looked at other companies. We have quite a growing pipeline, and we're aiming to do, I don't want to say exactly how many, but we're aiming to do a few more companies this year, and I think we'll be able to do that. We have a, a, a number of innovative and exciting companies that we're looking at and hopefully we'll be able to do investments in some of those moving forward. I, as you know, I always ask my guests to bring samples of uh, whatever it is they do to, uh, <laughs> to the film studio, just you know, in the, in the uh, interest of research. For some reason, John wasn't too keen to bring any of the <laughs> products in, perhaps uh, for good reasons. Uh, okay, let's um, talk about what you've kind of learned in terms of your uh, awesome insights slash kind of like what you could, what frustrates you maybe about uh, the last year and a half. You know, yeah, what advice could you give to Polish companies? Okay, well, I suppose that there's kind of, as I would see it, there's two problems for uh, Polish companies. One is lack of funding, which I think we're hoping to solve. But the other is it's not really, a, you know, it's just kind of a growing pain that there's not many experts or people that understand the biotech sector in Poland. Therefore, it's very difficult for a small company to necessarily know what their skills they need to be able to get the people with those skills, but also to uh, kind of develop a good business plan. Um, I, whereas in the UK, if you have a good idea, I think you'd go to a fund, the fund would say, you need to work with manager X, Y, and Z, and then they will put you in the right direction. Whereas in Poland, the fund may say to you, you need to work with manager X, Y, and Z, but those people don't necessarily exist. So this is actually something else that we're looking to do at PFR, as well as um, getting involved in uh, funding, is provide some training programs or outreach programs that enable people to understand more about the sector, what's required, what's the skill set that's needed uh, moving forward. And there's a new program that we're launching, which is called Biomed Academy, which is uh, PFR Life Science, who I work for, is a partner in this. But this is uh, being done by uh, main PFR. And the idea of Biomed Academy is it's for biotech, which I've been talking about, but also medtech. Medtech is slightly different. This is medical devices that could be used. They could be wearables or which could be used by individuals or they could be a device in a hospital. And so we want to support both of those. We're going to run a competition starting at the end of March. The competition will be open to any small teams with a company who've got an idea either in biotech or medtech. Um, and then we'll pick Wait. winners. Yeah, there's be a website. The website isn't launched yet, right? Oh. But it'll be if you there's an event called Med Meets Tech, which is taking place next week, and we will launch the program. Which is the date? Just the for date people. is Tuesday, I think. Tuesday next week. Uh, um, I don't know what day that will be. I don't know what day that is. April or something. It's, it's like, March. It's still yeah. March. Still March. Twenty six. Twenty six. I think. Yeah. Twenty six. Twenty sixth of March next week will be launched. There'll be a website launch at the time, and it will run through till the end of May. Um, and so you can enter on the website. There'll be an independent panel. So what do I Google just to, just to um, You want to Google um, PFR Biomed Academy. 
Okay, awesome. So if you, uh, if you Google that, it'll be on the PFR website. So there'll be a link to it on the PFR website. I'm sure there'll be a link to it on the PFR Twitter feed, etc. So you can look at various um, you know, outreach um, through the internet from PFR to, to be able to find out the details. It'll be launched next week. It'll run until the end of May. Anyone can enter it. There'll be an expert panel for MedTech. There'll be an expert panel for Biotech. There'll be winners selected. Um, and then the winners get two things. They get a program in Warsaw, which will be a chance to meet um, People from the sector, people are, say, for example, associated with Selvita, people associated with funds, people associated with the regulatory bodies, in order to be able to understand how the biotech and medtech sectors work in Poland. And then also, the British Embassy are sponsoring this event as well, which is very Shouts nice. Shouts out to my old friends at the British Embassy. I used to work there, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. So the British Embassy are sponsoring it, and there'll also be a uh, programme in Britain, to be decided the exact city. It could be Cambridge, could be Nottingham. We're still uh, deciding exactly where it will be, but this will be a chance to kind of get a more global picture. So you'll get the chance there to meet biotech companies that have succeeded, heads of those companies. You'll get a chance to meet some uh, big drug companies who are doing drug development um, in, in the UK, and therefore it will give you a wider perspective. So the original programme will tell you how does the system work in Poland, how can you take advantage of that, how can you move forward, and then the one in the UK will then give you a, a kind of global perspective. And drug development is a, a global industry. In order to, because you have this long regulatory pr uh, process, the cost of developing a drug is very, very large. Average is about $100 million. So in order to um, recover those costs, particularly as it's very risky, you need very large sales. And the only way to achieve very large sales is to have global reach. Mm. So particularly the US market, this is where you get the biggest reimbursements for drugs. So you want to be able to reach the US market. So I think the program in Britain will give you a perspective on how to achieve that. Hot diggity damn, doesn't that just sound like the best ever project competition product of all time. So make sure you Google that thing <laughs> that John just said. John, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I have to say that talking to you, I almost feel like uh, I missed a career in science because you've got this enthusiasm and passion for the subject. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's it's obviously, it's very innovative. It's going, it's going to, um, it's clearly moving forward. And pharmaceuticals and uh, med tech is something that I think is going to only become bigger because the population is getting older. Many diseases like, say, diabetes, cancer, um, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease are expanding all of the time. And this is going to be a huge unmet need of society. And therefore, it's also a huge opportunity for people that want to get involved in this um, industry, want to get involved in this sector and to educate themselves on how to move forward with it. The answer to most of those health problems can be found actually in beetroot juice, which is one of the key ingredients for barched. And that brings me on neatly to the quick fire round. <laughs> favorite place in Poland? Uh, Bielwieża. Oh, interesting. Uh, favorite food? Um, fish and chips. Polish fish and chips? Um, definitely Polish fish and chips. Very interesting. Favorite season? Um, spring for definite. Everybody's saying spring at this time of year. I wonder why. Uh, favourite Polish football team? <laughs> I don't know if we have one. Uh, Legia, then. Legia. That's made him instantly unpopular with the rest of Poland. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Uh, have I missed one? Off. Oh, uh, favourite children's cartoon? Definitely Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. We're all about puffing rock down, uh, down the Ney neighbourhood. John, thank you very much. Now, it is a... Scientific fact that 27% of scientists are completely mad, <laughs> although obviously there is always, uh, what is that, there's the 3% margin of error. Yeah, so, so it could be 30, it could be 24, it, it couldn't it? It could be 30, it could be 24, probably in the northward direction. However, it is a 100% fact that if you watch High Pulse go all the way until the end, you will receive an enormous dose of power and wonderful insight. And indeed, it now behoves you to share this episode where else you find it, be that on the social media platforms that are known as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, or indeed anywhere else you might find it, in the darkest corners and murky webs of the internet. So please go and do that, and I'll see you next time for the next episode of High Polska. Pow! Oh, 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 oh,